time to speak to someone that's just become world snooker champion for the fourth time. A thrilling final, a fantastic 17 days for Mark Selby, who joins us now on TalkSport. Mark Selby, good morning to you. Good morning, Mark. All right, Andy. I'm good. I'm very well. How are you, you little world champion again? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks, I'm good. Listen, well done. Congratulations. How are you feeling? I know I'm going to ask you all the obvious questions to begin with, but just how on earth are you feeling? You must be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, incredible, mate, you know. Uh, I, I was quietly confident coming here. I mean, I've had a decent season coming into this tournament, went in two, tour- two comps and getting to the latter stages and a few of the others and people like Neil Robertson's played unbelievable to beat me and, and a few of the others. So, obviously, working with Chris Emery this year, uh, I've massively seen the difference in myself mentally on the table as well. Mm. So, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, I've, I've got half a chance. I thought, obviously, I'll be one of four or five players who will be in with a chance. So, but, I mean, you still don't believe that it's going to happen. Yeah. Obviously, you come, here, you come here believing that you can win it, but it doesn't give you a divine right to win, you know, such a tough tournament. Mark, I have to say, I thought your level of snooker across the two days in the final was some of the best snooker I've seen you play for such a long time. It was just breathtaking. How how does that final compare to your three previous finals where you beat Ronnie Ding and John Higgins? Yeah, as, as far as uh, putting them on a, on a pedestal, for me... Uh, Beating Ronnie would have to be the top for me because obviously it's the first one as well. Uh, and I think winning it for the first time is always going to be the, the most special. And obviously to beat Ronnie in the final as well because he's the greatest player to play our game. And I've always said if I could choose somebody to play in the final and come out on top, it would be him. So that would be first. But this is definitely a close second. I mean, the atmosphere out there over the last two days playing against Sean, it was incredible. Mm-hmm. Especially with what we've experienced over the last... 12 to 15 months playing with no crowd, you know, and sport with no crowd and going out there playing in front of a, a full capacity was incredible. Did, did, did that edge you on a bit, even more than you thought would have happened? Because it is, as you said, it's the first time in over a year that we've had a, a, a capacity crowd at any event, let alone snooker. Yeah, yeah, it did. But then at the same time, I mean, we played here last year with no crowd and because of what it is, because of what the tournament brings and the, and the venue... Even playing here last year with no crowd, you still get motivated because it, mm. the tournament, it is what it is. You know, I mean, some of the tournaments we've played in this year, some of the smaller ones, you walk out there and you think, oh, I'm a little bit flat and you're sitting in your chair thinking, well, it doesn't really matter whether I win or lose because it's not a tournament, there's no crowd. But you, you didn't feel that here last year uh, at the Crucible. You're still trying your hardest because you know what's at stake at the end of it. But mm. to obviously be out there this year with a crowd, I mean, it's the best thing in the world, playing obviously at the World Championships, full crowd at, at the best of arena we playing. How, um, let me ask you about your semi-final. It was a great win over Bingham. There was a moment where it looked like he was coming back. He was sat in your chair there and you were smiling. You're probably thinking, oh no, not again after what happened against Ronnie. The, mm. the, the, the year previous, did that, was that in your mind going into this year's World Championship, even into the semi-final? Or even, dare I say, into the final because you were leading 17-13 and back came Murphy to 17-15 and he started to look like he was hitting the ball really, really well. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, even coming into the tournament, it didn't cross my mind. The only time it, it really did uh, was when I was playing Stuart in the semis and he got back to 16-15. Mm. And then he looked like he was going to clear up to go 16-all. And then that was at the time when I'm thinking, oh, here we go again, 16-all. I'm going to get probably pipped 17-16, two years on the trot in the semi-final. Uh, but other than that, I, it didn't cross my mind at all at any stage. I mean, even Sean coming back at me, I thought he played great from start. Yeah, he did. And... Uh, Definitely back to to where he belongs, you know, as a fantastic player, great cueist, and and for him to come back from seventeen thirteen, he, he still didn't hold back, still kept on playing his game, and I didn't really have too many clear cut chances, really. So I wasn't, I was still staying calm, thinking if I got a, a good chance, I, I was confident I'll take it. And thankfully for me, he managed to miss the red down the down the rail, I was, and I, I, I took out the clear. I was going to ask you about that red down the rail. I mean, I mean, if you miss that effectively you're losing the world championship was it there i know it's hindsight now and it's easy to say but there was so much resting on that one red and it was so difficult do you think that was, yeah. do you think you would have played it i think because I, I don't know i mean it's tough i think it was harder than what it looked on tv as well because the angle was a bit more a, a bit more of a cut than what it looked on tv you look on tv sometimes and it looks a bit easier yeah. than what it is when you're out there but Sean, obviously, knowing him since he's been 13, 14, I know for definite that he'd be happy that he's gone for it and he's lost on that rather than played safe and then thought, well, look, obviously, at least he's had a go and lost because I know that he wouldn't be able to forgive himself if he tries to play safe and, and played a bad safety and stuck it up. Mm. Your dish at the end was fantastic. The blue to pink, you know, looked spectacular. And then the pink to get on the black was just 
just wonderful to watch. What was your heart like when that when the pink went in and the white was flying off a couple of cushions coming round for the black? Yeah, well, I was telling myself, just make sure you don't miss the pink, because if I pop the pink, I'm seven in front with seven on. So I'm thinking, last thing I want to do is miss the pink. So I thought, just make sure you pop the pink, and then just hopefully it comes around and you have a shot at the black. But, uh, yeah, the brown was the one for me. I, I, I topped the brown in off the top cushion, and I thought I was going to be guaranteed on the blue. And the next minute, it's art. One of your banana shots, Andy. <laughs> it's art. And then I've landed, like, nowhere on the blue, and I've had to sort of chase a break and go up and down, but thankfully for me, I managed to clear up. Did you ever think about taking that blue in the corner pocket or was it always going in the middle? I did think about taking it in the corner, but I thought by taking it in the corner, I've got to pot a tricky blue into the corner and then I've also got to pot a tricky pink where yeah. I thought, if I cut it in the middle, I know the white's going back down towards the pink and hopefully I only have to pot one tough ball rather than two. Mm. Listen, I have to ask as well, we talked about your win over Ronnie in 2014, then you got to two finals, you, you won two finals on the spin against Ding. And John Higgins, so from 2014 to where we are now, that's four four times you've become champion of the world. Are, yep. are you thinking about overtake? I'm not going to say a fifth, because I know you would be thinking of a fifth, obviously. Are you thinking it's possible to overtake Stephen Hendry seven? No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I, I don't even look at stuff like that. I mean, even when I came here three world titles, I never thought, oh, I need to, if I win another one, I'm with, with John and stuff. I just come here to try my hardest and, and try and win the tournament. And if I do... Mm. Absolutely amazing. If I don't, then I always go out there and give it everything and, and have no regrets. Mm. Mark, listen, before I let you go, again, you say I'm a big fan of yours, you know that. Thanks so much for coming on and well done. Usually, in years gone by, there's like a big party to celebrate, of course, whoever becomes world champion. I'm guessing mm. the, the world we're living in now, that's not happening. So so what happens now? What, what do you do? You can't surely go to bed. I mean, you must be absolutely flying at the moment. Yeah, no, I'm still at the venue, so I've had to just do interviews. So basically, all they've done is just put like a, a boxer a crate of Moretti in the dressing room and I just sat in there with just the family just having a couple of drinks but wow. uh, yeah I mean but it's the way it is you know it's, a, it's the time we're going for at the moment hopefully uh, in the next few months this is a stepping stone going forward for sport and long may it continue and we have crowds back He's, uh, he's not the only one uh, asked doing this in uh, this interview, so I'm allowed to ask one question. Oh, right? okay, fine. Just okay. one no question. Problem. On the black, you went down, well, you this, addressed it. This sounds interesting. You addressed it, and then you got up and had another look. Was there a, was the, the nerves kicking in slightly there, or was there someone that you just seemed to, in your eye line, move away, or was it a little bit of both? Yeah, what it was. I mean, I was down on the black, and then where we have the, the two or three steps on, on my side, where you, where you walk out the arena to go to the toilet to go backstage... As I'm, ba- as I'm just about to play the black, two or three cameramen have just come running around the corner to try and get like the winning shot, oh. just, on my, just just on my follow through. So he's like wow. basically just like jumped around the corner. So I've got back up off the shot. I looked at him and I said, "Look, mate, you either like get out of the way, or you can't just stand there and take a picture while I'm playing the black." That's terrible. So he's, he's, he's moved out of the way, and then I've tried to compose, compose myself and then get down again, but. Uh, yeah, madness. It was a nice black to have to become world champion, though, wasn't it? I mean, you'd take that every day of the week. Well, yeah, I think you'd have potted that one, Ant. Uh, it reminded me a little bit <laughs> of the one that... Um, oh, here we go. The on. famous you, final. You might be pushing it now. The famous final. Yeah, you're not talking about yes. 85. Yes. It, it, it was nothing like that. No, the, it was the one that Steve... The, it yeah. went into that pocket, didn't it? Yeah. It, it did go into that pocket, yeah, but it was but, nothing... It was no, but it reminded <laughs> me, because it was just on the black to win it. Okay, yeah. There was a few similarities, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> 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 yeah, the black and white were left yeah, on the yeah, table and it went yeah, into the yeah, same pocket. Yeah. I know my snooker. Does, Don't worry yeah. about me. Mark, what you got? You got half a million pounds you got coming your way. What are you going to do with that? I don't know, mate. I ain't got it yet. <laughs> <laughs> how long do they how long do they usually hold on to it for? Uh I'm not too sure. In the UK events, normally we get paid on the Thursday or Friday after the tournament. Oh, okay. Finishes. Like when we're in China, you win a tournament in China, you get it about four months later. Oh dear. But, uh, yeah, normally it's the Thursday or Friday afterwards. So, okay. and we'll just see. just finally as well, because I like I like the romance of snooker. The trophy that you've got, is, yeah. is that the original one? Is that still the original one they give out for, from when Joe Davies bought it? And do you get to keep that for you? Do you take that with you now still? Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, it is the original one, and uh, I'll get to keep it to take it home for a period of time. I'm not sure uh, when they'll want it back. Uh, normally, in normal times, pre-COVID. You have to take it back, for instance, at the World Championships, uh, sorry, the UK Championships, because they have like a, uh, a a cabinet there to display like all the, the Triple Crown events. So normally you'd have to give it back in November. They'll put it on display. Then they'll give it you back in January or something to keep for another few months. But with what we're going for at the moment, I don't know, I probably may keep it for five or six months and then you, you give it back to them. Wonderful. 
Well, listen, Mark, um, it could have happened to a nicer fellow. You know, I'm a huge fan of yours. Congratulations to you. Well, well done, done to the rest of the family. What a fantastic night you've got ahead of you and thoroughly deserve yeah, you. Andy. You played some of the best snooker I've ever seen over those 17 days. So congratulations, Mark. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot, bud. Take care, mate. Well done. You too. There you go. The Cheers, newly mate. crowned and four-time snooker champion in the world, Mark Selby. Well done on your oh, snooker did, knowledge. Did, did you like the, the question there? I couldn't remember the year. I know, I know Steve Davis was in it and the bloke with the glasses. Dennis Taylor. Dennis Taylor. Yeah, it did go into that it pocket. It was in that pocket, yeah. Yeah. And but it that's, felt, it, that's it, it. I mean, the, it the felt, black that Taylor potted was totally different. Well, it felt similar. Okay, okay well, it shouldn't have done. It from, was that, from that young different. kid at 15, when that's how old I was at the time, just yeah. thinking back. You were born that, in 1970, were you? 69. What, what month? November. Oh, yeah, you would have been. Yeah, yeah. go on. Um, yeah, I just because, I, you know, the camera angle was the same. It's gone into that pocket. Yeah. Yeah, hasn't it? The camera angle was different, but yeah, it went into that pocket. Let's see. You know your See? stuff. You know your stuff. I know my stuff. Uh, because we had Mark Selby on live, of course, we haven't got time for the China. Oh, my.